This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, build your online presence with Squarespace. Hey everyone, I'm Ace of Clay and welcome to another sculpting video. If you're new here, I'm a sculptor and every week I make a new sculpture. Today we are re-entering the mutant universe, or as I like to call it now, the hidden world with the next mutant. Now I gotta say, out of all the mutants that I've made over the years, this guy is definitely in my top three. He is the mailman. He's got a super deep, creepy story that fits right in with the rest of them. And he's not this crazy, bloodthirsty slasher character. He's actually pretty behind the scenes. And you'll learn more about this throughout the entire video. So make sure you watch the whole thing so you don't miss any details. And before we get started, speaking of mutants, the next mutant plush is here, and it is the photographer but you'll notice something peculiar about him. He's got a zipper mouth that actually opens and reveals his teeth and that camera lens in the back of his throat. This guy is so cool. I'm so excited to finally be able to release him. I think out of all the plushes I've released so far, he's definitely my favorite. He's got his little briefcase. He's super high quality, just like the rest of them. He's got real buttons. He's got his striped high-waisted pants. All of his details are embroidered. He comes with a hang tag with his entire backstory on it. And he's super cool. And I'm super proud of him. And you can get him right now at aceofclay.com. You can even like use this as like a little change thing. Like you can put stuff in his mouth if you want. I don't know, I think he's cool. Like look at his teeth. Like this is a pretty, it's a pretty cool plush. All right, now without further ado, let's meet the mailman. <laughs> All right, let's get started with the armature. I've got my wooden plaque here and my aluminum wire, just shaping out the skeleton for the mailman and attaching his arms with another piece of wire and then bulking everything out with some aluminum foil. In the heart of the hidden world, where reality blurred with the ethereal and the extraordinary, there wandered a mysterious mutant known only as the mailman. Clad in a traditional navy blue postal worker uniform, complete with matching jacket and hat, he blended seamlessly with the shadows that danced between realms. His tote, large and weathered, carried not packages or parcels, but letters that bore the weight of destinies yet to unfold. All right, after finishing the armature with some Super Sculpey Ultralight, we're going to start adding our final layer of clay. For this project, I will be using some Super Sculpey Original, Super Sculpey Living Doll, and Cosclay Sculpt in medium. Once his torso is completely covered in clay, it's time to start working on his legs. I'm just brushing on some Bacon Bond so that the clay adheres nicely. And then we're going to start shaping out the legs, getting everything nice and smooth and to the size and shape that I want. As you can see, I want him to have very exaggerated and contrasting proportions. Then I trimmed up his pant legs a little bit so that we can show some of his sock. The mailman's appearance was deceptively ordinary, a disguise for the unsettling nature of his deliveries. His eyes, however, told a different story. They held a depth a solemn wisdom that transcended the ordinary gaze of mortals. They reflected the eons he had traveled, reading the threads of fate like a well-worn book. Once I've got the shape of the legs figured out, we're just going to take this tool here and add some wrinkles here and there. Now to create the bottom of his jacket, I'm using this nice thin sheet of cosclay, I'm using cos clay, of course, because it stays flexible, and if you bend it or anything, it's not gonna break. And I'm just going to blend that top edge in with the rest of him, and of course, leave that bottom edge hanging freely. Now let's poke in his little zipper line and start adding some folds and wrinkles to his jacket. These are just snakes of clay that taper at both ends that I'm blending in. And then before I go any further on his shirt, I need to give him a neck. 
outside of the hidden world. Rumors of the mailman spread like whispers in the wind. People spoke in hushed tones about the ominous letters he delivered, each containing a prophecy of how its recipient would meet their end. The mere mention of his name sent shivers through the spine of those who dared contemplate the mysteries that clung to his navy blue uniform. And here I'm just messing with that collar of his jacket that I made out of cosplay as well. I created this the same way that I created the smaller one, just on a bigger scale. Now I'm just going to add some more cosplay for the opening of the jacket here where his shirt is going to be. And we're going to blend that in nicely as well. Now for an added detail, I'm going to add some pocket flaps to his breast area and we're going to finish these off with some tiny little skulls. Once the shirt's looking pretty good, we're going to go ahead and give him a really long tie. After positioning his arms, I'm going to go in with my explorer tool to create some seams. Now using the textured edge of my pin tool, I'm going to roll it on the surface to give his jacket a nice fabric texture. His letters, inked with ominous prophecies of death, were a source of terror for those who found themselves entwined in the tapestry of his malevolent deliveries. Each missive detailed, with chilling precision, the circumstances surrounding the recipient's impending demise. The mere arrival of the mailman's letter cast a sinister shadow over the lives of those unfortunate enough to be chosen. All right, now we're just working on this guy's arms, adding some cosplay so I can position these after he's baked if I want to. And if you notice there in the front, he's got a crack. We've got a ton of air under this guy and we're going to fix that in a second. I'm going to show you how to fix it with polymer clay. But let's make his hand first, which really doesn't make sense because I just keep bumping it while I'm trying to fix the jacket area. But whatever, it works out in the end. Spoiler alert. All right, now the reason for this crack is air. I've got a ton of air underneath this guy's coat. I have no idea why. I thought I pressed all of it out, but sometimes you don't get it all. So the best way to approach this is to cut out a larger area around the crack and just break off the clay. I know it's sad. I know it's scary. You're probably going to sweat a little bit, but this is how you fix it and how you prevent future cracks. Because if you just go in and fill in the existing crack with some more clay, it's going to crack again, or it's going to crack even worse than the first time. So it's better to just do this. And as you can see, there is a ton of air. So what I'm going to do is go in with some bacon bond and squeeze a bunch of that in there. And then I'm going to pack in some clay and then we're going to put more clay over all of that ultralight that's exposed again and we're just going to blend it in to the best of our ability. The more patient you are with a repair like this, the better your results are gonna be. So just trust the process and take your time. You've sculpted it once before, you can do it again. The unsuspecting recipients, gripped by a paralyzing fear, spent their waking moments haunted by the impending doom outlined in the letters. Anxiety gnawed at their sanity as they futilely sought solace from the relentless specter of the mailman. Madness loomed as they attempted to evade their fates, their minds consumed by an unrelenting dread. As you can see, we're continuing our repair, adding some more cosplay, redoing the whole front of his jacket, and we're going to go in and add some more folds and wrinkles here and there, get that collar fixed, and it's going to be like nothing happened.
All right, we're gonna take a quick break from today's video to talk about our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you're a big business, a small business, a freelance designer, or a sculptor like me, Squarespace has everything you need to showcase your brand, sell your products, and more. I've been using Squarespace for over five years now, and this was even before they started sponsoring me, and I could not be happier with my experience. Their products are so streamlined and so easy to use that managing my website, aceofclay.com, is truly a breeze. Some of my favorite features include the portfolios and galleries. In my line of work, I have to show my work to the world, and Squarespace's beautiful portfolios allow me to do just that. I have an online shop where I can sell stickers, plushes, posters, sculpting supplies, and more, and Squarespace makes everything so easy. And I'm not kidding when I say that. I can track my inventory, print shipping labels, I get notifications when something sells. Everything I need is right there in the platform. You can even sell digital downloads. They really have everything you need to start selling online. And at this day and age, if you're an online business, you've got to have a social media presence. And Squarespace allows you to integrate all of your social media platforms into any page of your website. So if all of this sounds good, head on over to squarespace.com, start a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash Ace of Clay to save 10% on your purchase of a website or domain using my code Ace of Clay. Thanks again and Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now back to our sculpture. Okay, now before I bake this guy again, I just want to go over everything with a nice dabbing of bacon bond. This gives a nice texture and I don't know, I just like it. So we're just going to go ahead and dab that all over the place and then finish his other hand and then bake him again and hope he doesn't crack again. And as you can see, we lost his original tie in the repair so i just made him another one and i actually like this one better so we're going to stick that on and then are we going to do his hand yes we are let's get that thumb on now we're just going to dab some more bacon bond all over his huge back and get him ready to bake and on the first take it to the oven take here i almost dropped it <laughs> that would have sucked so let's try that again there we go and once that's baked and cooled down he looks good, nothing cracked, and it's like nothing happened. Now let's go ahead and work on his head. And I want him to have a really, really, really long face. So we're just gonna kind of sculpt a jalapeno pepper here. And I'm using some Living Doll because Living Doll is really, really good, high quality polymer clay that works very well. And I like using it for faces. Now I'm just going to press in the eye sockets and then go from there. Desperation birthed futile attempts at self-preservation. Some sought refuge in elaborate preparations, fortifying their homes against an imagined threat. Others delved into survivalist methods, hoping to outwit the inexorable destiny foretold by the mailman's cursed words. But the fear persisted, an unrelenting torment that echoed through the hidden alleys and spectral landscapes. And to go with his really, really long head, we're going to give him a really, really long nose. And of course, I want him to look gaunt, so we got those protruding cheekbones, and his face is just really bony, really long, really creepy, really stylized, and I love it. Just wait until you see when he's done. Now we're going to start getting ready for the mouth, starting with the nasolobial creases here that I'm pressing in with my spoon tool. Then let's shape out the mouth with my Explorer tool. You can have a really small, just sort of quivering mouth here. I just picture this guy kind of mumbling to himself all the time. Like you don't know what he's saying. He's kind of just like. That was my impression. After popping in his eyes and adding a bunch of wrinkles, got to give him some ears. Mm -hmm. 
After that other ear is done, I'm just going to nitpick things a little bit with my rubber shaper and a couple different tools, and then he'll be ready to attach to the body. And I'm going to dab on some Bacon Bond with this dirty filbert brush to just give his face a little texture too. Yet, despite the foreboding nature of his letters, the mailman was not a malevolent force. He ambled through the realms with a sense of purpose, guided by an understanding of the cosmic tapestry that eluded the comprehension of ordinary beings. He never sought confrontation or caused harm. His presence was more akin to that of a wandering specter, an observer of the inevitable. Now I want to give him a classic, vintage, I don't know if they still wear them, mailman hat, postal carrier hat. So I'm just going to shape that out of clay, cut it on an angle with my palette knife, and add a bunch of details to it. I thought this was going to be way harder than it actually was, but it was pretty easy. Just carved out a space there for his head so it doesn't just like sit on top. It's actually like on his head. Gonna add some wrinkles to the side and then a nice skull badge to the front. Then to add another level of detail, I'm using my Explorer tool to add some seams. And it's gonna be a skull with wings. Thought that would be a nice touch. And then we're going to finish it off with a little brim that I make out of cos clay or visor or whatever it's called. Going to stick that on with some bacon bond and then we will finish the rest of the hat with a little strip of cos clay. So take the visor off really quick, add that strip, and then stick the visor back on, and the hat will be done. And while that guy is baking with his hat, I got this little template of a bunch of tiny envelopes that we're going to make out of paper, fold them up. I'm going to make six of these or seven. The hidden world, veiled in an eternal twilight, was a canvas where the mailman painted the destinies of those whose paths he crossed. His tote, filled with the letters that echoed with the whispers of time, was a repository of fates sealed in ink. He wandered the hidden alleys and ethereal landscapes, the very fabric of the world bending around him. And what would a mailman be without a big tote of letters? I'm gonna go ahead and make that out of some foil and clay, of course. Texture it up with this part of my tool here. Add some seams, add a flap over the top of it out of cos clay, and this ends up looking pretty good. And to make the strap, I embedded a piece of floral wire in between two flat pieces of cos clay. And then we're going to see, do we want a crossbody or a normal, whatever that would be called. <laughs> and we're going to go with the normal one. I'm going to poke some holes in the bag, fill it with bacon bond, and then stick in the wire on one side and the other. And then we're going to bake this separately and hope that it fits right when it's baked, because I really don't want to stick him in the oven again. <laughs> And once everything's baked, it's time for paint. And as you can see, his head is completely painted already. That's because I forgot to hit record. I'm very sorry, but it is my typical painting process. We started with a base color, added a dark wash, and then dry brushed, painted his eyes white and all that. So unfortunately, we just got to go straight to his clothes. Got his jacket here, but that looks a little too teal for me. Going to mix up a new blue for him, and that's much better. Let's get this guy's uniform painted. Those who encountered the mailman felt an eerie tranquility in his presence. He was a harbinger of truth, 
the messenger of unchangeable destinies. And once my base blue is on, I'm going to wait for that to completely dry, of course, and then I'm going to dry brush a lighter blue on the surface, just to bring out all the details and make them look old and dusty. Now I'm just going to paint his tie. I decided on red. I was going back and forth between black or red, but I think red makes a nice contrast. I'm happy with that decision. <laughs> now let's paint his shoes, paint the badge on his hat with some platinum folk art treasure gold, and then get that base painted all black. And then we can't forget to paint his tote. I made it the same color as the rest of his uniform, but I think I might go back and paint it all black. I don't know yet, but I don't know. It's just, it's a lot of blue. And just to age and dirty things up a little bit on his uniform and his tote, I'm going in with a black wash. And look at that, it fits perfectly. And so the mailman continued his timeless journey through the hidden world, and our world, an enigmatic figure whose navy blue uniform hinted at the cosmic secrets he carried. He was neither hero nor villain, but a custodian of the immutable threads that wove the tapestry of existence. The letters he delivered, etched with the ink of preordained fate, whispered the tales of lives to be lived and destinies to be embraced in the silent corridors of the world. And that is the mailman. And as you can see, I painted all of his little envelopes with a yellow wash and dirtied them up really nice. And I'm attaching them to him with some Fabri-Tac. Fabri I don't know, it's not just for fabric because this glue works for anything. And it works great getting things to stick to polymer clay, which is a huge plus. After gluing on all of the letters and giving him his tote, say it with me. And he's done! My latest mutant character, the mailman, is complete. Let me know what you think of him in the comments. I really hope you like this guy because I love him. I love how exaggerated all of his features are. He's got those like super skinny legs and that really big back and that super long face. Oh, I just love him. Why isn't it focusing? And of course I love the addition of the little real envelopes that are everywhere. And Fabri-Tac works really well to glue anything to anything. And I don't know, I'm really happy with them. I think he looks sweet and I hope you like him. So again, let me know what you think of him in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok at Ace of Clay. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.